one is known for his creativity in the film and theater industry, and the other is known for his beef with Canadian singer Drake. Now, if you were thinking EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown, well, no, not them. Mike Nichols is a theater director and actor and entertainment critic from upstate New York, and Chris Brown, the host of the online show Cross Border Interviews, wants to ask director James Gunn if when he said DC's The Flash was one of the best superhero movies he had ever seen, if he wasn't actually mistakenly watching the first season of CW's The Flash. Either way, together, Mike Nichols and Chris Brown talk about the entertainment industry as two people who aren't the people you were thinking of only can. This is, no, not them. Hey, Michael, what's up? You have beef with Drake? Uh, Yeah. Because he is not Drake. He is uh, Degrassi's. I forget the actor's name now. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's really dweeby, too. Yeah, exactly. But how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm thriving and surviving in this world that is on fire. We are at the summer hiatus mark. This is our last episode until September. We'll come back for the first week of September. But there's a lot that we have to unpack. But I, I, we really haven't really spoken that much this last month because I've been busy with clients and traveling halfway across this goddamn province. And you've been just uh, doing rehearsals and reading, from what I understand. Yeah, I've been, I've been not as busy as you. You've been like animal busy, like running all over town, doing all, the, doing the most. I've just been like reading my books. Gotta pay the bills, as they would say. I've been like reading my cute little books and like doing some theater things, but like, no, no, I, you make me look like I do nothing. Hey, I, the next few weeks are just going to be swamped for me, but I'm looking forward to it. But let's talk about some entertainment news. And I want to start with the first thing uh, that kind of new today ish. It was recently announced the day that we're recording this, not the day that it comes out, uh, that uh, Ryan Seacrest of American Idol and of the uh, Live with Kelly and Ryan show is now taking over for Pat Sajak, who announced earlier this year that he has got one more season left in him and he's done. And for those who are listening to this right now, you are seeing the eye roll of epic proportion while sipping tea from Mike Nichols. Um, what's your thoughts on Ryan Seacrest getting another job that someone else could possibly have? Why? He's not even entertaining to watch. But like, I just don't get the appeal. But, like, I just don't get the appeal. Like, he's got the personality of a wet paper bag. He's got the the uh, charisma of a fucking gremlin in the yard. Like, I, I just, why? Like, you could have found fucking anybody else. Hell, James Corden would have had more charisma than him. Like, it's just, it's, like, safe and boring. And, like, who cares? Well, a lot of people care. Plus, I think it's the Do whole... people like this? I don't Do know. you like this? No. I, don't, I, 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 I didn't realize that Pat Sajak had actually retired until they had announced that Ryan Seacrest was taking over for Pat, C, uh, Pat Sajak. So all I can tell you is Vienna White, God bless her, she's sticking around and she has got uh, according to uh, page six or whatever entertainment news outlet I'm reading right now, um, she has hired attorneys to make sure she gets a significant raise after, say, Jack retires. So I guess press because a million an episode wasn't wasn't enough. The greed of America. <laughs> but as Childish Gambino would say, this is America. Oh, welcome to it. No, no, you're not going to throw your little quippy thing that you talked about earlier on into this, the conversation right now. What? I don't know. About Childish Gambino? It's been a long month for me. <sighs> it's been a month. long month. Happy Pride. Well, yeah, I guess so. It's coming to the end of that. So what prideful things? What, what Has there been any gay news in the last month? Like, has anyone come out? Has anyone done anything of significance in the 2S LGBTQ plus community? No, we've all been too tired. Give us a raise and give us some time off. 
they are attacking the LGBTQ, 2S LGBTQ community, aren't they? Just, I'm tired. Give me a break. Give me a raise and give me a bottle of champagne to celebrate me. But the one thing that did happen, and this is the one thing that you can speak openly about, is the Tony Awards. The Tony yes. Awards happened during a writer's strike. And I know you and I had, I, I think we, I can't even remember three weeks ago, but here we are. I think it happened two weeks ago. But uh, how'd they go from your standpoint? I mean, they were, there's, there was a lot of categories that were pretty predictable. In fact, a lot of them, I would say, are pretty damn predictable for how it went in, especially now that the Tony Awards has kind of turned into are starting to turn into what needs to win awards to stay open longer. And Kimberly Akimbo needs needed the awards to stay open longer that was actually worth keeping open longer. Because New York, New York also would need awards to stay open, but it's yeah. it didn't win any because How was it wasn't it to have the non-host host. It was listen. I don't think anyone needs to be hosting these award shows. It was three hours. It was the perfect length. There were a couple of times they sent her out and we're like, Ariana DeBose, I need you to like go kill time somehow because we're running quick. Like perfect. Flawed. Like I don't need, I don't need a host. And and I think that, you know, having the pieces at the beginning where we are announcing this person's walking up to announce this, this person and like the announcing of the different shows I'm fine with that. I don't need comedic canned bits. I don't need any of that. I don't even really need an opening number at this point. Was there an opening number? Yeah, she just kind of, she went shh and threw the script and then danced. And it was like, hmm, love that for us. It was good. It was fine. It just was, who cares? Um, but overall, like, there was no surprise shocking winners. Not I really. Want, I, want to talk, I want to talk about one because I think I sent you the mess. I think I sent it to you like literally the day after the awards. But Alex Newell, they won their award for Shocked. And yep. they were sitting right behind Leah Michelle of her their Glee co-star. And I didn't know Leah Michelle had never won a Tony Award. I had thought they I had don't think she's even been nominated. I thought they. I thought she was for Spring Awakenings, but I could be wrong. Um, there was a lot of social media chatter about the whole Alex Newell getting up behind Leah Michelle and Leah Michelle having to watch Alex Newell uh, give their uh, acceptance speech. Yeah, it's iconic. We don't like Leah Michelle. But wasn't there also a controversial? Uh, award recipient who dropped the f-bomb oh now i'm a faggot with a tony award yeah yeah what was uh, that all about um he gave a really great speech about how growing up people called him that and how people treated him like shit and how he was like how people basically otherized him and then he goes and now i'm a faggot with a tony award and it was everything michael arden should have won a tony award who two nominations ago who uh, what was he nominated for and what did he win director for? um parade for parade oh, okay. for parade did yeah he, leah michelle has Black never Black? no he didn't win um it was jay harrison gee who is also non-binary so we had the first two non-binary winners ever in the same night but they won for um best actor yeah, yes they chose to they chose to compete in the acting categories and i fully think it's because if they were competing in the uh, um, actress categories they would have lost the actor categories were weaker this year than the actress categories it could have gone like three or four different ways in each of the categories and if you threw one of them in they were like bottom of the bottom of it um, but the saving grace for me was Sean Hayes took home his Tony Award. I didn't see. I, the only one I saw out of all of the Best Actor nominations was Between Riverside and Crazy, just because I Top Dog Underdog closed before I got to see it. 
And um, I did not get to see the death of a salesman when I went. I I instead went and saw a piano lesson and I just it didn't have time to fit it into my schedule um, when it was open. And then I didn't, I still haven't seen Goodnight Oscar. I know it's open and it's still running. And I'm like, it just looks boring. You uh, uh, you have been seeing a lot of uh, shows lately in uh, on Broadway. Uh, has it been yep. packed as you expect, or has Broadway? Is this usually the downtime for Broadway? No, this is the busy time. This is the time of year when you go that you kind of want to really plan in advance what you're going to do. Especially if you're going to stand at the TKTS line, you're going to want to get there probably an hour before it opens in order to like, get your first or second pick because and I and fully take advantage of the fast pass thing if you're going to go and see multiple shows in a row just because this is the really busy time this is the time of year where I would even recommend buying tickets in advance because I don't buy in advance unless it's one of the big five which I have zero interest in seeing I always go and I stand in the TKTS line. You get, you go the first time you wait in the long line and then you get a fast pass every time you return for a week showing that ticket. So it's like, ah, I'll do it. I'll stay. And it's usually 50, 40, 50, 60% off tickets. So it's is there any kind of worth over it. the summer that you're looking forward to seeing, or is it kind of uh, because I know you've been, there is one that was coming up that you said you wanted to see, or you had just seen it like last weekend. So I got to see Light in the Piazza, which is an encore, which is their concert series, which only lasted for a week. I really hope it transfers. It was gorgeous. It was wonderful. I need to see it again. Um, and then I am seeing on July 8th, I think that's Saturday, Saturday, July 8th, I am going to be back in the city because I'm seeing an Eric Badu concert. And then, but the matinee that we're going to have that day, we're going to see Once Upon a One More Time, the Britney Spears Cinderella themed musical. I thought it, you were going to say you're going to go see Bad Cinderella again. I was like, wow. No, I, no. Like it that closed. It. <laughs> it closed. You can't go see it again. Challenge accepted. Unless you can turn back timeshare, you ain't going to see it. Oh. <laughs> and then in August on the 12th, we're doing another city day and we're going to do two shows. Um, right now it is The Shark is Broken and Here Lies Love. Um, however, if we're going to replace, if we need to replace one, it'll be the cottage. What's the cottage? Which is with, it is Eric McCormick. It's directed by Jason Alexander. It is George Costanza, Jason Alexander. Yeah. Okay. It's like, it's a comedic farce. And so I'm like, you know what? This could be fun. Well, you'll have to let us know how it is on lights of Broadway later on this year. Um, but I want to turn to what you listen to on your way from uh, your house to Broadway, because I'm assuming sitting on the train, you're looking for amazing podcasts to listen to. And after you're done listening to our show and listening to the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, where we talk with municipal councillors and local elected leaders from across Canada, you think to yourself, how else can I bore myself? <laughs> so I. Uh, As you know, as we talked about earlier on, Spotify's head of podcast innovation and monetization has labeled Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, grifters after their $20 million multi-year deal to make podcasts with the streaming platform came to an end after they just made 12 episodes. Michael, had you listened to Archetypes on your show? What? (laughs) What? A transition. What a wild, unhinged, sporadic, crazed transition. What I do best. Um, I have not listened to archetypes. I don't, this is going to be very shocking and very problematic. I'm not really a podcast kind of girl. Um, I'm not really a music kind of girl. Unless it's live, I really don't do much listening to music. I, I tend to read. I'm going to ask a question with, right now. Have sure, you ever listened sure. to an episode of my show? Yes. I have. I have. Why are you giving me that look like I haven't? I have listened to an episode of the show. <laughs> have you listened to more than five minutes of an episode of the show? More than five minutes? Absolutely. 
Okay, continue on. No, I just, I can't, fo- I have to like focus when I'm listening to things. And like, I just, my brain can't do it unless I'm physically like in the moment. So like with theater, you can't have your phone on you. Everything is lights off, like shut out. You're focused. You cannot be, no, there's none of that. There's none of that. Eh, no, if you have your phone out in a theater, you are an asshole and people in the audience will start yelling at you and tell you as such, which happened at Light in the Piazza when someone's phone started ringing because they were texting. And this person turned around and goes, can you shut that fucking thing off? We're trying to all watch the show, not you. People will call you out. Don't don't have your phone on you in the theater. But like that helps me pay attention. I'm gonna, I'm ready to fight. It is hot. I'm ready to fight. Um, And I also see a lot of live music. Uh, I just saw uh, Sean Kingston and Vogue TLC and Shaggy all went out together. And it was wild and it was incredible. And I enjoyed every second of that. Like I love music and I love theater and I, I love listening. Like I do enjoy podcasts. It's just, I have to fully be focused on just that. where I don't absorb the information. And then I have to keep rewinding. What was that? What was that? Like, it just doesn't stick. Okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. You don't like my show. It's okay. Um, You can be the one of the like 6.8 billion people who don't listen to my show, but it's okay. It's okay. I've said I've listened to an episode and it was longer than five minutes that I listened. Did you forget that you turned it on? No. I listened to it. Just in case. No, I listened to the first couple that we were on. Aww. (laughs) But let's get back to the grifters of the group, because as much as we're drifting, let's grift over to the grifters. Um, Megan and Harry, uh, they have been going through sort of a weird transition period because they were the hot item in Hollywood for some time. They were on the cover. They were like meeting with Oprah. They were doing sit down interviews. Uh, they, they had their deal with Spotify. They have their deal with Netflix, but it seems like the fall from grace is uh, quite uh, quick and quite hard for them because even Netflix is looking or they're, they they still have their deal with Netflix, but uh, it doesn't sound good when one organization drops you and another one starts looking at other options. No, they're not looking. Netflix isn't looking at other options. Oh, I thought that's what you said when you pitched this story. I no, guess. they were they were saying that they're not going anywhere. But like, also, what have they done? And like, if they were pumping out even media on some real level it wouldn't make sense. Like, whatever. Like, you might not agree with what they're saying, but, like, at least they're pumping out content. Yeah. But if you look at what Archwell has done, it's done 12 episodes of this podcast and two documentaries in the, like, three years. True. It just doesn't seem like a lot for $20 million. <laughs> That's No, I'm it's just... what are you using the money for? Yeah, and you can't take security and flying back and forth to Britain to sue the news organizations, but... That's here nor there. I did find it fascinating because I had literally stumbled upon it that uh, that Megan, Sus- Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, uh, did reach out to Taylor Swift to come on her show, and Taylor respectfully declined. Um, it, it's also interesting that uh, Taylor Swift respectfully declined bringing her heiress to her to Canada and Australia. So. Welcome to the club, Meghan Markle. Canada and Australia got rejected by Taylor Swift as well. So maybe there will be an album about it. Um, but let's talk about Taylor Swift here for a few seconds, if possible. Um, she has been doing her eras tour, and it seems like every Swifty is basically looking for a ticket to that show. Um, is she the it thing right now? She's been the it thing. Has she? Yeah. Because I thought Beyonce was the it thing for a long time. Beyonce still is the it thing, different demographics. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time, different demographics. Hmm. Shocking. I just... I mean... I, I, I don't like Taylor Swift. I know I don't like Beyonce. I don't like Taylor Swift. For all those Swifties and those beehives who want to come after me, please do. I'd highly recommend you send me your emails. I'll file them in the appropriate location. Um, 
Uh, be careful. Swifties will dox your home. Eh. They'll light your house on fire. You got to be careful, Taylor Swift fans. Well, I'm in Canada. Canadians. That doesn't anything. mean anything. Taylor Swift's not coming to Canada. Maybe they have to be more upset with her than us. And can I just say something for a second? I'm going to just go on a rant here for about two minutes here. So please no, sit back, no. enjoy yourself. The Canadian Parliament and the Australian Parliament passed resolutions because that's what they needed to do at this time, saying that it was an affront to Canadians and Australians for not coming to uh, their countries on this era's tour. We have high inflation rates. We have people who are suffering with mental health. We have an opioid epidemic that is sweeping the nations. And our biggest concern right now is Taylor Swift not coming to our country. Give your god dang head a shake because it is stupid that we are wasting so much time on something so insignificant. Toby Keith hasn't come to Canada in a while. I haven't been upset. Should I be? Maybe I should. Maybe I'll find that conservative politician or liberal politician who will pass, who will present a petition in front of the House of Commons to say we need to bring these people to Canada. Enough is enough. Let's start dealing with the real issues in this world and not focusing on these freaking insignificant ones. Oh, how are you? Yeah, wild. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. That was just wild. The fact that they said it's an affront to their nation. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was down. even a joke. Oh, hold on. Talk, talk about Taylor Swift for a second, because I need to find this person. Talk about Taylor Swift. You want me yeah. to talk? I don't know enough about her music, other than her very infamous line, go and tell your friends I'm obsessive and crazy. That's fine. I'll tell mine that you're gay. And then she changed it because she got labeled homophobic and problematic. And isn't it, I'm kind of the right thing to do is to change it. Yes, but it's funny. I just think it's funny. It's like problematic. It's very problematic. But like, she's a good songwriter. I don't like her as a performer. And it's okay. She doesn't have to be for me. I also because I somehow got stuck on Taylor Swift TikTok have had have now had a friend become my Taylor Swift interpreter. Because I had to learn things about Taylor Swift fandom because it keeps popping up and I don't understand. And I'm one of those people that like, I want to know things. And like, so all the algorithm needs to do is throw something with like a mystery at me and I will like deep dive it. So like it threw some Taylor Swift things at me. And then I'm like, who the, who's Marjorie? So I had to call my friend. I'm like, Stephanie, who's Marjorie? And she told me who Marjorie was. And then I asked another question and she told me that other question. And so like, now I'd literally be like, Stephanie, explain this Taylor Swift thing to me. And she'll explain it because she is obsessed big time. You got to get an interpreter. You got to get an interpreter. They're great. No, I don't. I don't need to waste any time on trying to figure out what Taylor Swift is. She'll break it. I don't waste time now. I have my interpreter. Before I'd be like having to do research. Now I'm just like, Stephanie, who's a Matt Healy? And why don't we like him? Who's Matt Healy? That's the one she just broke up with. And he's a bad boy who's racist and homophobic and very problematic. And his band hates him, but he's talented so they don't fire him because they're also problematic. His capitalist's got a capitalist. Anyway, I'm not just saying. Talk, I'm not talking about her any more than I have to right now. I okay. want to talk about uh, someone else who did a thing recently. Well, she didn't do a thing. She got a thing. Angela Bassett of Angela Bassett did a thing fame. Oh, we are removing our head speakers because I'm not sure if he doesn't want to hear this, but Angela Bassett. No, I just had to fix my thing, hat. And she is getting a honorary Academy Award. She was nominated just recently for Black Panther, did not win, lost out to Jamie Lee Curtis. And now the Academy Awards is handing her her EGOT, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Correct? No. One closer she, to the EGOT? I don't think she has much by way of awards. I'm going to be honest. She gets very overlooked despite a very lengthy career. I think she has an Emmy. She's got to have an Emmy. She has the honorary award. She has no Emmys. 
Okay, she has mind. two Golden well, Globes getting, and she has getting, one SAG. She's getting a honorary Oscar. Um, about time, or is this a sorry we didn't give you the award last uh, round? And be honest, I, mean, I think it's a, because... I think it's sorry we didn't give you the award last time. I mean, I think she's due. She should get one. She's yeah. a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant actress, and she constantly gets overlooked. I mean, constantly. I just think that this is one of those like, oops, we fucked up. Let's try and maintain people's attention and joy and say that we're going to give her this award. But shouldn't they have it's given just... Glenn Close uh, an honorary Oscar by this time already? Because she's girl. I'm a little girl. surprised they don't. I'm a little surprised she doesn't have one either. I'm going to yeah. be honest. I, I don't know. It's just, it feels like a pity award to me. And I and you already know if she starts getting the rest of the EGOT awards that they're going to look at it and say, well, she didn't actually earn it. She got the honorary one because people like to say that. And it's sort of true. Well, for the longest time, they didn't say Whoopi Goldberg had an EGOT because her primetime Emmy wasn't a it was her it was Emmy a daytime. Wasn't a prim, it was a daytime Emmy. And there was a lot of controversy around that for not actually being an EGOT winner. <laughs> oh. Life as we know I think is. the Oscar is the only thing that she needs to Glenn. Who? Glenn? Glenn Close. She has yeah. a prime time Emmy. She has. Does she have? Oh, no, a... she doesn't have a Grammy. She does not have a Grammy. Well, she'll probably get one here soon. She, she does have is a it, Tony. Isn't she doing Sunset Boulevard for TV or movies? Yeah. Is that coming out this year? Um, that I do not know. It's got it's got to be oh, been she... in the works for a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, she's but been. She, they've announced it years ago. Yeah, COVID slowed it. Um, now the writer strike has basically halted Hollywood to a T. I think it's already written. I know, but half the shows that are already written, or half the movies that are written, they had to go on hiatus because. When usually you do reshoots and then you re-edit or rewrite scripts and during production, right? Yeah, I I don't even think that they've even started filming it. Okay. No. Oh. Hold on. Maybe they'll it's not even on it. Wikipedia. Oh. Who knows? Who knows? But you know who knows the best who knows? Maury Povich. Maury Povich knows no... You are not the father. <laughs> you are not the father. In this June of Father's Day month, Maury Povich has announced that he is coming out with the home pregnancy DNA test... Paternity. Kit, paternity t- kit for those people who are too afraid to go on Maury Povich. You can find out if you are or are not the father uh, at home now. Uh, good PR move from him. I think it's wild. I don't think anyone was ever like expecting this. I think it's one of those things that like it's kind of funny, but it's probably gonna have so much usage. I think people are really gonna gravitate towards America. This is America. It's America. America. So like, I think people are really gonna use it. I think there's tons of people that want to know but don't want to deal with the whole test and go either like go to the doctor and have the conversation. They want to do it kind of at home and do it privately because they're unsure. And and so it's like, it's a way to do it now. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be epic. Epic. But it's like more of these things need to become more readily available. Like what specifically we're sending it off for what reason? Like if we can do it at home and it's the technology's there, it makes more sense. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. As you know, in the live recording business, sometimes things happen and then we have to cut to a commercial. And for those 10 seconds where there was radio silence, I do apologize. But here we are back for the latter half of the show. And I want to start with the flash because uh it came it went and it bombed and it bombed. did it bomb oh it bombed it bombed worse than freaking ant-man and black adam like like i said 
James Gunn saying it was the best DC movie he had ever seen, one of the best DC movies, I literally looked at myself and went, hmm. And it is getting universally panned. Panned. People are upset. It's awesome. Uh, the CGI is bad. The graphics are bad. The filming, uh, the storytelling is bad. It's just a bad, 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 bad movie. I think they are done as The Flash. Ezra Miller has gone, and they will no longer be uh, gracing our screens as Barry Allen, The Flash. And James Gunn has now decided to move on to start filming Superman Legacy with the new uh, actors, which I just had his name up here two seconds ago, and I can't remember it. But his, the female version of Lois Lane is going to be Rachel Bronson from Marvelous Brazilian. Brazahan and the male lead is the gentleman from the TV show, the politician who played River in that. For those who don't remember, he's the one who committed suicide, which led the main protagonist to run for office and become a politician. But I'm just going to make sure I got that right, which I think I did. Uh, David Corrin Sweat, sweet, is the lead as the next Clark Kent Kalal Superman. I'm not looking forward to it, to be honest. I don't think James Gunn is a good director. I don't think he's a good storyteller, but that is just me. What's your thoughts? Can we just let DC go to die in movies? It, for some reason, just doesn't translate well. Or they just keep picking. Like, part of what worked with the Marvel stuff, I think, is they picked a lot of the superheroes that were not as, like, big name no to, known to start. Like, pick some of the, like, more obscure ones. Not the Batman, which has been done to death. Superman, which has been and done to being, death. Being done to yep. death. Wonder Woman, done to death. Like... If you get like a Green Lantern, get like a, 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 a the Atom, get Martian Manhunter, maybe do some of the ones that like are big players in it, but aren't as known or just say anything that the DC CW shows did any character on there. We're not going to take and we're just going to pick from like the most obscure of obscure and maybe don't do a Justice League, do one of the other side Groups because DC society, just, the original version of the Justice League, yeah, like something like do so because it's just been done to death. Whereas Marvel never was like, I mean, there was even that TV show in the 80s and 90s, like Form of a Bucket of Water. Like, it's just every everybody knows that all the DC, it just it needs to go. She needs to, she needs to pick better choices. They do, and I don't think James Gunn is going to be the one who does it, but here we are, and we're going to be looking forward. Heck, Marvel, like you said, Marvel's been doing it right. They haven't even introduced the X-Men. I know they did it with Fox, but Disney, Marvel Cinematic Universe hasn't introduced them. They haven't introduced the Fantastic Four. Yet again, Sony Pictures, Paramount did that, but Marvel Cinematic Universe hasn't. And they're not even doing it like right away. Even when the uh, rights to the uh, movies came in, they're not doing it like the next moment. They're waiting. They're waiting a very long time to introduce these characters. Fantastic Four, I think, is coming out in 2027. Yeah, but that's four years. But that's now. so far away. Exactly. Like, will we re even remember what's going on right now? No. No. So, it's and I think X Men's coming out after that, if I'm not mistaken. <sighs> but here we are. Yeah, I don't even think that they're looking. Oh, sorry, 2025. X Men's not even like on the docket. I bet you they just put like the X Men stories have been done to death. We know the X Men, so you I can just throw them in and say does surprise as a Disney Plus show. Agreed. I think, and I think that that's where they're heading with um, Ms. Marvel. Yeah. I think, I think that's where they're going to start to introduce the X Men or Inhumans. Yes. I think, I think they are going to start utilizing the, well, 
I'm not sure if you saw the first episode of Secret Invasion, but I did. I and, did. Uh, I was I was happy. Uh, it's a little slow to start off, but oh, um, I was so unfocused. It was slow. Exactly. Exactly. I was like, okay, what's going on here? This better. I only really like the fact that Olivia Coleman was in it, and I was like, oh, Olivia, my girl, my girl, I love it. She's amazing. Yeah, I um. I'm excited to see where it goes. I wasn't like thriving and surviving with it. I wish it was, I wish it was a little more entertaining, but like they'll move it along. And a lot of the Marvel TV shows, they slow burn it because it could probably just be a two hour movie, but they're like, we'll make it a six hour TV show. And we'll give you much more background and story building, especially introducing these really complex themes and really complex characters. So like it makes sense with the uh, secret invasion for someone who read the comics most of these characters are not in the original comics so they are going to have to introduce a lot of new characters and bring them up to speed with who these people are because i was like oh, oh, okay should be fun yeah always, always interesting but i want to talk about a movie that's coming out that is close to your heart because in a barbie world you're a barbie girl living laughter life is plastic whatever you want to call it um there has been reports that there has been a shortage of pink around the world due to the fact that barbie has taken all the pink and painted their props and sets um i know you're excited about this this is coming out in a few weeks here um i know there's been a lot of uh i wouldn't say social media chatter about what's going on between it going up against oppenheimer and oppenheimer and barbie going to be going against each other and then there's the social media chatter that we chatted about last week about or last month about ryan gosling being too old to play ken and now there's some controversy about some of the people who are in the movie so what's your thoughts on the upcoming barbie movie i know you're excited but are you really excited still Yes. Also, it's very much giving like McDonald's, you want the boy toy or the girl toy um, with both movies that weekend. And I'm kind of loving it. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, it's it looks super great. There's tons and tons and tons and tons of co- like marketing campaigns and collaborations with different organizations. Oppenheimer's not getting any of those. No, but Oppenheimer's Barbie getting is. a lot. Oppenheimer's getting a lot of freaking flack from uh, Hollywood right now. Why? Because, oh, you haven't seen this? I'm not, well, I'm just no, but I'm about to be elated. So IMAX, so Christopher Nolan and IMAX are like synonymous, right? They love each other. Sure. They, Chris Nolan shoots all his movies on IMAX films. And Oppenheimer is taking all the IMAX theaters across america or around the world if i'm not mistaken and showcasing this this has pissed off the people at mission impossible tom cruise because tom cruise wants it to be an imax and mission impossible comes out a week prior and imax was like sorry christopher nolan's much better he promotes our stuff he shoots exclusively on uh, the imax films and tom cruise is furious right now that so tom cruise and scientology are pissed got it so that's like half of hollywood (laughs) correct (laughs) correct the other half is jewish shalom um so it is shocking that while barbie is sort of a slow burner and it's just gonna get released and people are gonna be excited about it oppenheimer's been getting a lot of good reviews as well and i'm actually really excited about it because i was reading a review i forget which organization it was i think it was the washington post or one of like the chicago sun one or the other and in it they said people were leaving the theater because it was that realistic and it was that traumatizing of a storytelling of how this guy basically 
built a bomb to kill the world and i'm like i'm so excited about this now i wasn't excited about it beforehand i'm so excited about oppenheimer like i'm not even gonna see barbie until it comes on like the 99 cent or even the free version of whatever streaming platform it is but i might actually go see oppenheimer when it comes out in theaters that hurts my heart girl you said you only listen to five minutes of my show so fuck off (laughs) I said I listened to at least, I just said I listened to a couple of episodes. Rude. <laughs> Rude. Wow. Wow. My husband has to more shows than you. Has he? No, but still. I, 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 the call is coming from inside the house, folks. Barbie just doesn't seem like a movie, but that interests me. Like, I've seen all the commercials, and I'm like, I don't get it. And I feel like I'm, like, this is the episode that, like, I'm throwing the wet blanket on because, like, I'm going coming for Taylor Swift. I'm coming for Barbie. I'm coming for the Beehive. Like, if I don't get dogs, I'll be surprised. Um, do you, you, have you seen what, like, the rumor is? That it's the story of Adam and Eve. Like, it's a adapted like story of adam and eve situation not oppenheimer i'm assuming right no no fuck oppenheimer i'm talking about barbie like oh, it's like this really like groundbreaking like it's people because they've been analyzed people are have no time or people have too much time on their hands sorry that's the opposite too much time on their hands so they've been hyper analyzing all of the trailers and that they are that they, it's kind of giving this whole like adapted Adam and Eve Bible story do you think thing. It's be and, built up to, do you think it's going to be built up so much that people are actually going to not like it? No, I think it's just people are, are enjoying the fact that they can go and theorize what it's about and, and look through the trailers. They're doing such a good job with the marketing campaign that it's kind of iconic. And like, it's going to be this whole like, thing on like free will versus like versus uh autonomy or versus control and like it's just it's this super like really like nuanced really profound conversation that's happening around the barbie movie and i'm so ready for this to be an oscar darling i'm just letting you all know it's probably gonna be i think oppenheimer is going to be as well Oh, I'm not saying Oppenheimer's not. I'm just saying everyone's like, Barbie's not going to be Oscar anything. And I'm like, you are all about to eat your damn I think words. I, could, I will put money on it that Barbie gets mo- a nominate for cinematography, costume design, sound editing. Uh, Directing. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Greta Gerwig, lo- they love to nominate the bitch. Okay, so maybe direct, maybe direct your best picture probably then as well. I don't probably see screenplay. I don't see Margot and uh, Ryan Gosling being nominated for acting. Well, we don't know yet. We I might watch this and walk hey, out and be hey, like, "Hey, hey, maybe is what? Who who's the president of the uh, who's the president Barbie? Who plays that? President Barbie? I want to say it's Issa Rae. I thought so." I'm just double checking for those. Yes, Lisa Issa Rae, you're right. I apologize. Um, I think she might get nominated. I think some of the quote unquote uh other Barbies, yes, will get nominated. Maybe Will Farrell will get nominated for his role as well. I'm pretty sure he's got in this, by the way. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm so excited and I can't wait this for this to be like the cinematic masterpiece, like point blank period. I'm waiting for it because it's it's just doing everything so smartly that I, I would just be very shocked if the movie wasn't equally as smart. We will see. We will see. 
I want to end on two last stories here. One, I want to make a special mention to Treat Williams. For anyone who knows, over the last month, few weeks, uh, Treat Williams, the star of the uh, show, uh, the t- movie Hair, um, the star of Everwood, one of my favorite shows, one of the most influential shows that I have ever seen. It got me through a lot of my dark periods after my partner had passed away from a drunk driver. It's one of the reasons why I moved out west, uh, passed away by because of a motorcycle accident. Uh, he was turning. He did not see or the person did not see him on his motorcycle. And unfortunately, he uh, passed away. Uh I will always remember him as Dr. Andy Brown from Everwood. Uh, there's one scene in that that I play over and over again to lift my spirits. And I highly recommend anyone who has not seen the show, the CW show, or at that time, the WB show Everwood, highly recommend you watch it. Um, I know you weren't a massive fan like I am, uh, Michael, that Treat Williams, but did you have any fond memories of the actor? Well, so he, my friends Garrett and Katie used to have a a podcast that they did um, called K- Katie's Musical Madness, where they would, Garrett's a big theater person like I am, Katie, his girlfriend, is not. So he would force her to watch movie musicals, and then they would, first it started out as like a written blog, and then they moved it to a podcast, and so they started and she would, they would just talk about it and she would explain the plot and talk about how much she hated it usually because she hated everything. Um, and so part of the like promo for each episode or uh, blog posting, they would go to those like face in the whole things and put Katie's face or Garrett's face on the different characters. And so they posted a picture from Hair with Katie's face over where Treats was and they would put it on Instagram and be like, da 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 this person and tag all the people in it and treat Williams commented on the Instagram post. That's not treat. And it was the funniest thing. We were like tackling. We're like, sir, obviously we know it's not treat. Like, obviously we know it's not you, but like, it's the joke of it. And, and my friend Garrett tried to explain it. And he responded, he goes, yes, but that's not treat. Done. Oh. It was funny. Good times, good times. So let's end on this because it has been the show that has not really, actually it might even be ending by the time we air this, but it's always good to have pre-recorded predictions on this show. Um, RuPaul's All-Stars Season 8 has come and gone, and I'm 90% sure I've watched more episodes of The Pit Stop than I've actually watched of RuPaul's Drag Race. Because it's I more just... entertaining. Exactly, because you got Bianca Del Rio there, and fuck, she's hilarious. Um, you mean any, Nana? Yeah, any, <laughs> any predictions on who's going to win All-Stars 8? Jimbo's winning. They have kept that bitch at the bottom so much. Like, they're giving Jimbo the crown. And the only reason that they are keeping Candy is because they need, like, a villain for Jimbo to triumph over. Like, it's just, it's so... And they had some queens I was so excited for. And then, like... Are you shocked that Lala left? I'm annoyed that Lala left. Especially after Alexis Michelle was like, I'm never going to forget this. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. Blah, 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 blah. And then Alexis Michelle went on this whole tirade on fucking twitter about how i made the wrong decision i'm gonna have to live with regret and blah 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 blah. it's like what the fuck like stop trying to save face just be like i sent her home because she would have won i don't think candy can win i think lala would win so i sent her home because she would beat me do you think alexis could would lose against jimbo yes but I think she thinks she can beat Candy and she can beat Jessica. So she just has to get that one episode where if you're not in the top, you're in the bottom to get rid of Jimbo. Yeah. But also notice how RuPaul has not done that this time. Mm-hmm. Last week when he could have done, because it's usually top five onward. If you're not in the top, you're the bottom. Why didn't you do it this week, RuPaul? Same oh, thing. because... Candy would, or because Alexis would have sent Jimbo home. You think so? A hundred percent. The so? only reason Jimbo's never going to be in the bottom is because they're going to send her home. Okay. I would send her home. 
She's won three challenges and the next person, everyone else has only won one. You get rid of her, all of a sudden you clear a path to actually be really considered for win. So we are um, one episode away, two episodes away, if I'm not mistaken. Two episodes, right? So we yep. are this week's and the next week. So you're saying Jimbo's going to win? Yeah. I'm throwing a Hail Mary here. And I'm throwing a Hail Mary weirdly. I think it's Are you saying Jessica Wilde? I am. I don't know why. She's I love nothing. her. She's done nothing, but I think it's one of those. I think she could out lip sync all the others. Like if it just strictly came down to lip sync, Jimbo's done. Jimbo can't lip sync with the left of them. But the last lip sync does not matter as evidence of Candy or of um, um, Trixie Mattel and uh, Kennedy Davenport. Trixie Mattel never won a lip sync and then beat Kennedy Davenport, who's one of the strongest lip syncers the show has ever seen. Make it make sense. That's true. And just like Jinx Monsoon lost that last lip sync to Monet Exchange and even has gone on record saying she lost that last lip sync, but won the all winner season because she obviously had more wins and dessert. But like that last lip sync does not matter unless someone does something absolutely unbelievably insane. Like Evie Sasha. Oddly or Sasha Cole or uh, Sasha Velour. I don't know. It's going to be fun. But until then, until September, man. It's yeah. uh, it's weird. We're gonna be going on a hiatus because uh, Michael's got a lot of things that he's got to be doing, and I'm gonna be driving halfway across this godforsaken country. God bless Canada and its vast wilderness. I'm going from Calgary to Toronto to Ottawa to Quebec and out to New Brunswick over the month of August. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to getting it back out on the road and enjoying the open road, which I haven't had the ability to do for some time now. But Michael, what have you got planned for the next few months? Next two months until we chat on the record again. I am obviously going to the city a couple of times. I am, I have a wedding in September, early September I have to go to. I'm going to Cape Cod for a week. I'm seeing Pink in Boston. Um, I'm going to see a bunch of local theater. I'm in a show. I'm starting, I actually will be starting the process. I auditioned for a cabaret. There's a cabaret that I'm directing that I'm also going to be in. And then I'm directing a show that are all starting in like the August timeframe. So I'm going to be in like three shows at the same time, either on the production side of it or being a part of it. So I'm going to be busy for probably the beginning half of fall. But yeah, that's a lot of stuff going on going to be interesting. But until then, remember everyone, he has not been Mike Nichols, the EGOT winner. I have not been Chris Brown, the rapper who has beef with Canadian singer-songwriter Drake. This has been no. Don't. I try to do this in one take. Okay, I'm going to be up. Aubrey! Here. His name was Aubrey! Was it? Drake's name was Aubrey. Hold on. Did I just pull that out of nowhere when you said that? Yeah. Aubrey I mean, Graham. Aubrey Drake Graham. I, ooh, shit. I'm good. But that wasn't his name on the Degrassi. Degrassi. No, but that's his real life name. Yeah, I don't care about that. Oh, I, don't, I didn't watch Degrassi. I was too young. Because you're, because you're American and you're, oh, shut the fuck. Up, you're too young. You I went too young. And I tried to watch it and I'm like, oh, she's real dated as they're on that dial up, like <laughs> computer texting that grown man. Those like 13 year olds that are like, we're talking to an adult, like, ma'am. Ma'am. No. Uh, well, if you haven't just put a wet blanket all over me there by saying that is old, I don't know what is. I didn't say it's old. I just said I was too young to experience it. And date it. And date it. Oh, are you talking about the computer? I Listen, I know dial-up. I grew up with dial-up. I'm just saying I wasn't watching shows where people were bringing guns and having sex at like four or five years old. Anyway. He hasn't been Mike Nichols. I haven't been Chris Brown. <laughs> this has been. <laughs> oh, 
fucking Christ. No, not them. Till September. Talk to you later, everyone. Thank you.